The recent arrival of Windows 10 meant big things for PC gamers as it would finally enable DirectX 12 gaming. Following AMD's lead with Mantle, Microsoft aims to provide console level efficiency with closer to the metal access to hardware resources and reduce CPU and graphics driver overhead. As was the case with Mantle, most of the DirectX 12 performance improvements are achieved through low level programming, which allows developers to use resources more efficiently and reduce single threaded CPU bottlenecking caused by abstraction through higher level APIs. This all sounds really exciting, but up until now there hasn't been a DirectX 12 game available to test these theories out. Technically this still isn't, at least not officially, however Stardock has recently given those that pre-ordered Ashes of the Singularity on Steam early access to the game. This is great news for gamers and reviewers alike, as it gives us all a chance to check out an upcoming DirectX 12 title, and there's even an extremely detailed inbuilt benchmarking tool to boot. Some tech sites managed to get their hands on an even earlier build of the game a few months ago, and their findings sparked quite a lot of controversy. The results showed that Nvidia Maxwell-based GPUs were slightly slower under DirectX 12, while AMD's GCN-enabled GPUs radically improved. The truth is somewhere in the middle, as I'm about to show. Nvidia's DirectX 12 performance isn't great, in fact it's actually bad given better results can be had under DirectX 11, but it's hardly disastrous. AMD's DirectX 12 gains are solid, but they're nothing like the 50-70% gains some loud and proud AMD fans would have you believe. That being said, let's move on for some pre-beta testing. Please note, all benchmarks were recorded using a Core i7-6700K processor and the latest drivers from AMD and Nvidia. First, let's look at the DirectX 11 performance at 1080p to establish a baseline. Things look mostly as expected, although I'd say that the gap between the GeForce and Radeon graphics cards is slightly larger than normal. Keep in mind, AMD doesn't perform as well at 1080p as it does at higher resolutions due to their driver overhead. It's been said that AMD hasn't done much work to optimize their DirectX 11 drivers for Ashes of the Singularity, though given what we've seen here, they are mostly there. The DirectX 12 results are far more competitive, and while the GTX 980 Ti is still able to lead the Fury X, it's just a single frame that separates them. The 390X is also very close to the 980, while the 390 is able to leave the 970 behind. Now we're going to compare the DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 results side by side. As you can see, Nvidia drops 2-3 frames per second under DirectX 12, which is troubling, but not the end of the world. On the other hand, the Radeon graphics cards pick up 2-3 frames, which is great news for AMD fans. Moving up to 1440p, we see that DirectX 11 performance on the AMD side does improve. For example, the 390X is now slightly faster than the GTX 970, though we'd normally expect it to be quite a lot faster. The DirectX 12 1440p testing is very similar to what we saw at 1080p, with a minor decrease in frame rate performance. That being the case, the performance margins all remain much the same. Comparing the 1440p DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 performance side by side again shows that while Nvidia drops 2-3 frames per second, AMD is able to increase performance by a single frame. Now at 4K using DirectX 11, we again find that the 390X is only able to match the 970, while the Fury X is only able to match the 980 in what is an unlikely scenario. Using DirectX 12 at 4K allowed the Fury X to perform within 1 frame per second of the 980 Ti, while the 390X was just 2 frames per second slower than the 980. Comparing the DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 results side by side, we once again see that AMD makes a small step forward, while Nvidia takes a step backwards. Keep in mind, all the GPU tests were conducted with a Core i7-6700K processor. This means that DirectX 12 will provide better performance gains over DirectX 11 with a slower processor, as we're about to see. Using the Radeon R9 Fury X to measure CPU performance at 1080p using the crazy quality settings, a few things become obvious. Firstly, the Intel Skylake processors don't benefit greatly from DirectX 12, with just 1-2 to two frames per second extra being rendered, which is what we saw in most of the previous GPU tests using the Core i7-6700K. The AMD processors, however, suffered massively when using DirectX 11, partly due to AMD's driver overhead and sadly partly due to the fact that AMD's processors just aren't that efficient. However, DirectX 12 sweeps in to save the day for AMD, or at least brighten it up a lot. The FX 9590 enjoys over a 50% performance gain to roughly match the Intel Core processors. Likewise, the older Phenom 2X6 received a huge performance bump and so did the A10 7870K APU. 
Reducing the in-game quality settings to the medium preset with MSAA turned off, we see that the Intel Skylake processors are capped at 61 frames per second in DirectX 11. However, DirectX 12 affords quite a lot more headroom, allowing the 6700K to reach 84 frames per second. With the GPU bottleneck removed, the Intel processors race away from the AMD processors even when using DirectX 12. Running the same CPU test with the GeForce GTX 980 Ti, we find very different results, particularly when looking at the AMD processors. While the AMD processors were seen to be significantly slower using DirectX 11 with the Fury X, this wasn't the case with the 980 Ti, where DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 performance was very comparable. The AMD processors also perform better when using the medium quality settings with the 980 Ti. Similarly, we find there's very little difference between DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 on the Intel processors when comparing performance with the 980 Ti. Finally, here we have the 980 Ti and Fury DirectX 12 performance side by side using the medium quality settings. As you can see, the margins are roughly the same, which is great news for AMD as the DirectX 11 performance didn't look nearly as well balanced. Well, that was really interesting and there's a heap of data to consider from what I would call a preview at best, especially given the game is yet to enter the beta testing stage. One of the first things we should discuss is why the Maxwell GPUs were for the most part slower with DirectX 12, albeit only a few frames slower. The reason has to do with Maxwell's DirectX 12 support, which is currently limited, despite Nvidia claiming otherwise. It was discovered that the new asynchronous compute feature doesn't work correctly with Maxwell GPUs. Maxwell doesn't provide hardware asynchronous compute support and instead Nvidia patch support in at the driver level which comes at a performance cost as we've just seen. AMD's cards on the other hand feature hardware based asynchronous compute in the GCN architecture which can give them an advantage in DirectX 12 games as we also just saw. So with Maxwell, Nvidia have been more focused on DirectX 11 performance and to a certain extent this makes sense. Most of the games released, while Maxwell remains current, will only use DirectX 11, giving them time to shift focus once DirectX 12 becomes more commonplace. With AMD gearing their GCN architecture towards parallelism, they are better prepared for DirectX 12, though they've taken a hit in DirectX 11 titles. The GCN architecture requires the CPU to feed it data, and as we've seen, this can create a CPU bottleneck, as DirectX 11 can only utilise 1-2 to two CPU cores for the graphics pipeline, and this also has to include things such as AI and physics. This is why we saw the AMD processors really struggling in DirectX 11 when paired with the AMD Radeon R9 Fury X, while they fared much better with the GeForce GTX 980 Ti. That being the case, it's also important to note which CPU is being used for GPU benchmarking and then which GPU is being used for CPU benchmarking when comparing DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 performance. Also, gamers should be mindful that this is just a single DirectX 12 game and is unlikely to represent DirectX 12 performance as a whole, as no single game is expected to do so. As is the case with DirectX 11 gaming, it's also very likely that some DirectX 12 games will favour AMD, while others will favour Nvidia. Still, if the early access version of Ashes of the Singularity has shown us anything, it's that AMD and Nvidia are very competitive in DirectX 12, as graphics cards such as the GTX 980 Ti and Fury X worked within 1-2 to two frames per second of each other. As always, we've posted these graphs up in our forum at hardwareunbox.com for anyone that would like to take a closer look without relying on the pause button. And you're also you're welcome to ask any questions that you'd like there too. Thanks for joining me again. For more videos like this one, remember to hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you next time.